Good morning, my fellow Africans and the world at large. This is Emmanuel Kwajomensa once again, coming into your homes and your minds with a message of empowerment and enlightenment all the way from Ontario. Today is the 25th of May in the year 2022. And the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And for that matter, I take this opportunity to invite the whole world to join me to give thanks to God for the day that he has granted unto us and life in general. Life is a gift from God to mankind. And for that matter, we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Life is beautiful. Life is wonderful. Life is gracious. Life is something that is God himself running through us. And we need to be grateful and rejoice in it. Today, I'm going to speak to you on the topic, Righteousness Exaltation. But sin is a reproach to any people. This is a Bible quotation, it is, and it is taken from the book of Proverbs 14.34. And as a matter of fact, I learned this Bible verse when I was young in church, in Sunday school. And through my personal Bible studies and also hearing people preaching. And this Bible quotation has been used several times. And uh, it is a matter of time that, as I've always been saying, we're taking Bible to another level. And that is by looking at the Bible or the biblical verses and symbols in light of the truth, which is the metaphysical truth. So today I'm going to speak to you on this. And it is my prayer that you will be awakened to the truth. And all of us being awakened, we will set ourselves free and set Africa free and make our continent, our countries, a place of wonders, a place of greatness. So righteousness, well, we are told that righteousness is following some rules. So as I'm talking to you now, based on how we were explained to righteousness is someone from the Christian perspective who goes to church. He follows the church procedure, church uh, rules, and he doesn't fornicate. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. And once you go to church and you don't do all these things, you are considered as righteous and you are on the way to heaven. Those in Islam to have their own way of defining righteousness. You have to pray a certain number of time. You have to perform the ablution before you pray. You have to do this, even the way they dress and all these things. Righteousness is seen from this, the observing of these outer uh, rules, religious rules. And it runs through every group of people from the religious point of view or perspective. But righteousness goes beyond that. Righteousness goes beyond that. And as this word is used in the Bible, we say that righteousness exalts a nation. And if righteousness that we have been preached to really is the righteousness that the Bible is talking about, then our nation should have been exalted. To exalt someone is to make the person great, to become something wonderful. So righteousness is supposed to bring something in our life which reflects the level of our righteousness. But the fact is that righteousness is simply right thinking, but not following religious rules. Right thinking. Yes, it is not morally right to fornicate. It has its own uh, repercussions. It is not morally right to drink, to take alcohol. It distorts your own um, consciousness. It is not morally right to steal. All these things are some of the moral uh, principles in our life. It is a human uh, a human in the way of looking at things that this is not right this is not right so those things are not necessarily sins but they are not anything that helps us but even if you look at these things in a, to the at a deeper level all these things that we call morally wrong or yeah are all right are 
from one root, and that is thinking. Any man who thinks right would know that it is not right to drink, especially when you are going to drive or when you're going to do this. So alcohol is something that takes out your consciousness. So that person with the right thinking will make the right choice. Any man who thinks right knows that life is a gift from God. And therefore, you do not have the right to take your, uh, to take your friend's life for whatever reason. Any man who thinks right would do only things that build people, only things that comes to empower him and all people around him. So when we talk of sin, the great sin or the actual sin is the thinking in the negative or thinking right, wrongly. So righteousness, as used in the Bible, is right thinking. Thinking in the positive and looking at all things from the highest point of view. Anything that is good for you is good for other people. Anything that is not good for you is not good for other people. Therefore, don't do that to other people. And if you are able to bring this principle in your life and walk by it, then you are a righteous person. You don't necessarily have to belong to any religion. And any man or woman who lived by this principle and walked in that, then the person is a righteous person and everything in his life becomes prosperous and wonderful. So as we have been taught, if we are actually to look at the Bible verse, uh, the book of Proverbs as it is presented, that righteousness exalts a nation. So if we are to bring this principle into our lives, then wherever you go, you will see the righteousness of the people in their life. That is right thinking. People who think, who would make decisions based on universal truths and follow it and do it in the right way will always become great. And as Jesus Christ gave us in the book of Matthew, that you will know them by their fruits. You will recognize them by their fruits. So you will recognize righteous people by their outer ex experiences. You recognize the righteous people by the way of their way of life. So if you are, you consider yourself to be righteous, that means you are in tune with God. You are in alignment with God. Therefore, everything that is of God will reflect in your life. God is onward. God is upward. God is all that there is. God is all the good things in our life. So if you are living and your life is full of only the, or only the negatives of what God is, that means you are not right. That means you are not thinking rightly. The use of the human mind is the gateway to successful life. The right use of the human mind is the gateway to successful life. And the right use of the human mind makes the person a righteous person. So when you are a righteous person, you are able to stand up, you receive ideas, and you develop these ideas to improve your life and the life of other people. So it is only when we do this, then we bear the fruits of righteousness. So when we come to our, when it comes to our lives, when it comes to our existence, the righteousness that the Bible speaks of, that God required of us, is to have a clear and, a, and a, an open mind, a mind that harbors nothing other than the goodness of God, seeing everything from the right perspective and knowing that all things are spiritual. Therefore, you must give reverence to it. You must give respect to it. You must honor and you must honor everything or approach everything with reverence. And that is righteousness. That is right thinking. So when you begin to think in this way, then God works through you and bring new ideas, new things that has to spring forth on the earth to bring his glory to mankind. So righteousness, exaltation, we can see this by comparing our lives and our nations, our towns to other people. Those of us that are in the advanced world, we will see this 
truth playing out, but it's just that especially Africans, we are blindfolded by our religious beliefs. We are unable to think beyond certain boundaries to come to these truths. Righteousness is shown in the life of the people. And as I am saying, um, when I came to Canada, I was blessed and I had the opportunity, I had a job in the large, one of the, yeah, the largest bank in Canada. And my office was located at the heart of the financial district. Those who know Toronto, if you come to Toronto, Bay Street is the street where you find more, almost most of the big, big banks and big companies. And I was on the street working for the largest bank in Canada. And I had the opportunity to explore the the city of Toronto. And every time, any time I go for a meeting, any time I go to places, I begin to ask myself, I begin to wonder, why is it that this is not my country? Why is it that this is not in Accra? Why is it that I am not in Accra, the capital city of Ghana, with all these things around me? And one of the fascinating things that I have come across in Toronto in Canada here is in the city of Toronto, what they call the path. If you come to Toronto, in the inner Toronto, downtown core, greater part of the city is underground. So you can walk for over a long dis distance and under without coming out. And underground, you, you have every shop, everything that is on overground, you have it underground. And in fact, I used to work with my friends from our office, which is uh, 200 Bay Street. Those who know uh, Canada will, 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 uh, and who have actually been to this part of uh, this city will agree with me. And then we used to walk from there to Eating Center and we used to walk around. And sometimes when you are going for a meeting, uh, my, my company or my bank had a lot of offices around there. So I had the opportunity to tour all these places and everything, any time I go through this, any time I experience this, one thought that comes to me that why is it not in Accra? Why is it not in Accra? And then it dawned on me, it came to a point that it dawned on me that yes, this is what we call righteousness. The fruits of their righteousness is littered everywhere in their lives the fruit of their righteousness. So I, 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 as a matter of fact, whatever I am doing now is driven by some of these thoughts that has tormented me as an African, as a Ghanaian, who was born in a village, raised by poor people, raised by unknown people, grew up in some difficult situation, grew up to become, to come to this point. And I could see from my mind, I could feel from within that there is something wrong with the African setup. People talk of money. People talk of money. No, money is not the issue. But the idea, the ability to use your mind to generate idea is that matters. For someone to sit down to think that when it is winter, it is very cold. And therefore, we can plan our town, our city in such a way that we can build a whole town underground such that when it is snowing in the, the difficult uh, winter time, people can actually go to wherever they want to go by without coming on top. It's right thinking. And that is what we call righteousness. The person has taught up to a certain level that his mind was connected with the mind of God. And so they were able to do this. If you have never, if you have any time, if you have never visited Canada, any time you visited Toronto, please, one of the beautiful places or things you need to look for is the Toronto Path. You can walk underground. Every building has its uh, uh, overground uh, uh, path, has its equivalent underground. And you will have everything there. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And so when Jesus Christ said that you will know them by their fruit, you will recognize them by their fruit. When you, when you come to this part of the world and you begin to look at what people are doing, then you will know that these are the people that are thinking rightly. People that are receiving ideas that 
becomes wonders of the world. That is the truth. So you will become what you think. And what we say, righteousness exalts a nation. This is what the Bible means. Now, Canada is considered as an, a developed country. Why? Because of their right thinking. They are exalted. Africa is considered under development because we have been given the reproach because we are not thinking rightly. We are not exhibiting the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is to for God to work through us to bring every good thing that is in him on the altar for the enjoyment of humanity. So, bringing back the Toronto path into the equation once again. So, I work in a bank and I have been my I've been in the office for a lot. Actually, I studied uh, on the, one of the buildings called uh, on the what do we call it Wellington Street. Then I came to Two Hundred Bay Street, and it got to a time I was taken to another office, a brand new building that was built along the Ontario Lake Ontario, and that is the Queen's Ski. They call it Queen's Ski, and where this building was, a few distance you go right in front of the lake. And I had the opportunity to walk with my friends. Anytime we go there to far, just to have fun, they, have, they were having fun, but a lot of thoughts, a lot of things kept coming, in, coming into my mind. And as someone who was born and raised along the Volta Lake, always the Ontario River, uh, Lake, I was looking at it as the Volta Lake. Then I asked myself, if you look at the beautiful things that they have done on this lake, and even after the point that they created an island, they have ferries, they have things, people, look, it's so beautiful. Then it turned on to me, yeah, this is what we call righteousness, right thinking. Someone, people have sat down and talked things into being, and it is reflecting in their lives, and that is their fruits. So you shall know them by their fruit, by their fruit. You will recognize them by their fruit. This is what Jesus Christ was putting across. If we come to Accra, if you go to Nigeria, Lagos, if you go to anywhere, you will see them or you recognize them by their fruits. Their, what, 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 is, what, what, what are the fruits of the African people? People carrying things on, on their back. Women carrying children on their back. Look, all kinds of debilitating things that we are still doing because our thinking is not right. We lack righteousness. So the packing of ourselves in churches and mosques and all this and that, we are seeking righteousness, is not what the Bible is speaking of. We are here to demonstrate. We are here to show, to express the glory of God. And the glory of God must come through you. And so if you are here and you are not depicting the glory of God, that is why the Bible talks that all have sinned and therefore fall short of the glory of God. That is what the Bible is talking of. Negative thinking, the un inability to use your mind in its right way is the sin that Apostle Paul wrote about. All have sinned for the, 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 and therefore they fall short of the glory of God. We all, mankind, every human being, for uh, I, uh, is a victim of this, but people have been able to work themselves out. Come and if you have time, those, those of you in Africa, you always want to come for visit. When you come for a visit on holidays, spend time to look at the beautiful and attractive there and begin. When you go through all these things, let those things become an inspiration. L begin to question your mind, yourself. And as the, the Greek philosopher put it, that the unexamined life is not worth living. The unexamined life is not worth living. And this is the time that we go, we ought to all examine our lives. Righteousness, exalt a nation. Right thinking, exalt a nation. The only thing that can exalt a group of people, that make them great, that make them recognized, is the level at which they are using their mind. And the level at which you are using their mind, it shows your righteousness. Some of the vices that we do here, there are things that we pick up here. Alcohol was created by mankind. So it is not 
not necessarily a sin to take alcohol. It is one of the bad habits that mankind has created. Um, in terms of fornication, it is the last of the flesh. So people will fall to it. But those things, we can control them. We have power over them. But apart from that, when we take them out of our life, then God flows through us. Then we, our righteousness is exposed in the outer and people begin to enjoy it. Now, the path I was talking of, the same underground path they have been able to ride across at a point, the biggest train station in Toronto is called Union Station. On the other side to uh, uh, the Queen's Key, or yeah, the Queen's, uh, yeah, or the Lake Ontario, because of the railway and the major roads there, they brought the path out and put it over the road. So you can go through from my office, 88 Queen's Key. You can walk in a path like a tube and then come to the train station. And when you come to the train station, as soon as you get out of the train station, you descend into underground and walk to wherever you want to be. So as I'm, as I'm talking to you, and it's a fact, when you come, you see all these things littered here. You can actually travel within the inner city of Toronto without you being touched by rain or snow, cold or whatever, all by the use of the human mind. And you will see all these things as the yeah, fruits, the fruits of the Canadian, the, the, the white people's mind. Whether we like it or not, it's a fact. They put their minds down. People are using their minds at a certain level. And that is the righteousness God required from us. That we need, to, we need to worship God in truth and in spirit. And when we worship God, our worship of God is using our mind to bring out his glory, to bring out his beauty in our lives. So what we see in Africa, poverty, lack, and all these things, is a reproach. It's a reproach. That we are receiving. Yeah. So the, right, the, the writer of the book of Proverbs is absolutely right. Righteousness, exalt a nation. And if, when you come to this advanced world, that is when you will see. And you only need to have an open mind and begin to allow the Spirit of God to work and speak through you. Righteousness, exalt a nation. And the greatness of a nation is based on the level at which they use your mind. America became a greater nation, not because of whatever they have in natural resources. They actually came and settled on the land. The actual people who were living there have lived there for years, but they couldn't turn that land into anything. But someone came and by the fruit of, by their fruits, we recognize them as a superpower. Go to United States, there is a uniform level of development. Go to Great Britain. And I, when I was in London, I used to go to Canary Wharf. I used to visit all these places. And you used to wonder, how did someone sit down to think of the Where did he begin? And why, how did he come to where he is? But the fact is that it was done by human beings. It started by someone. And that is why we are calling on all of us. Now is the time for us to call on each other, Africans, that righteousness is not found in churches. Righteousness is not found in temples. Righteousness is found in your own mind. And that mind has to be purified. As soon as you purify your mind, then you think rightly. You think from the universal point of view. Your life is organized based on laws and principles of the universe. Then you are a righteous person who is in alignment with God, who is co-creating with God and bringing the goodness and the beauty of God into the world. There are a lot of things that are happening. In other parts of the world, but in Africa, it's a dry and nothing is happening because we, we are bearing our own fruits by their fruits. You will recognize them by the fruit of the African. You recognize them. And what do we recognize them as poor, lack, underdeveloped people? That is it. And people are not, we, we've been given this name, not that they, 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 they hate us, but it is the true description. People are only commenting of what we are, what we are bringing up from within. 
Righteousness exalts a nation. Let us begin to think and begin to seek this kind of righteousness from the mental perspective. Everyone using his mind in the right way. And as I've already mentioned, righteousness is right thinking. Righteousness is right thinking, but not putting on a gown, not wearing a certain kind of things, not asking women to put on this and that and that. No, that is not righteousness. That is a religious document. It is a man-made rules that men and women have made to control their fellow men. God is personal. God is so close to every one of us. God is everywhere. God is the energy, the spirit that keeps everything alive. And therefore, we need to worship him by being in tune with it, I mean, thinking into the think mind of God. And when we think into the mind of God, the creation process that is set off, we also continue. The world is growing. The world is going fast. Go to the Asian nations. They are doing amazing things. Look at what is happening in China. Building bridges across uh, the, the oceans. The African is still paralyzed. That a common bridge over a river, we have to go for loan. We have to go for technology from somewhere. Yes, you shall know them by their fruits. And the fruit of the African is the underdevelopment, the inability to use their, our minds. And our minds are going just lying down, waiting for activation. And that is the message. That is the empowerment we are putting across. Yeah. Any man or woman listening to me, those of us in the developed world, you can confirm this. Maybe you haven't actually put this in this right perspective. For the fact that you are here and you are doing a job that is not in Africa, but you keep me to see greener pastures, is an evidence of someone's righteousness that you are coming to benefit from. Where is What is your righteousness? Your right thinking. Thinking is the business that we are supposed to be doing here. Any group of people, any group of people that are unable to use their minds in its right way perishes. And that is what is happening. That is what is happening. We are buried in riches. We are buried in greatness, but we are unable to make this greatness a reality because we are not thinking rightly. Right thinking is having your mind and thinking only in the positive, forgetting anything that is impure. The concept of uh, witchcraft, the concept of evil spirit, the concept that some people are working against you is the number one thing that has brought the African down. Where we are, and based on my experience as someone who has worked in a developed world at a higher level, there is one principle, there is one thing that is encouraged here. Even I learned this both in the United Kingdom and Canada. It's sharing of ideas. So when you are in a business here, whatever thing you get, you share with your friends. And because you are working in a team building, you are working as a team, so you share ideas, and that is how the organization grows. So whatever you do, whatever you discover, you willingly and freely share with your people, and that is how you grow and to become. But in Africa, what we do, if you have an idea, you keep it to yourself because you are afraid that someone will destroy you. Someone will do something to you. And therefore, we are sitting on our own. Yeah, this is what we call the unrighteous person. The unrighteous person is the one who holds things, who holds things to himself with the mind that he is, someone is going to hurt him. That is negative thinking. And that doesn't bring any improvement. And the fruit you are bearing is lack and poverty. The fruit you are bearing is lack and poverty. So Jesus Christ's statement that you should know them by their fruit is what this is what it means. Jesus Christ, as at the time he was speaking, the, the human beings' evolution at that point was at elementary level, and they were only farmers, peasant farmers, and all. So they only spoke in the terms or in line with the level of their evolution. If Jesus Christ were to be here today, he would put it in exact way as I'm talking. Now we have human being has evolved to a certain level that we have everything that people never thought of in their days. And so in our times, our fruits, the fruits 
that we bear will not be us going to sit in temples and whatever, but it's the what we, we experience in our life, what we have in our lives. That is the fruit you are bearing. What are you doing? What are you leaving behind? What is your contribution to the nation? Right from the top to the bottom, right from the highest office in the land to the lowest office or the lowest position in the land. What is your perspective, my fellow Africans? What is your perspective of life? How are you using your mind? You need to emancipate yourself. This mental slavery, this slavery that Marcus Gavi and others say is what we are talking about now. Their, their job was an unfinished business and this is the time that we have to finish it. The African mind has to be liberated. The African mind has to be set free such that we will bear fruits the fruit of the Spirit, which is God's own power walking through us. Love, peace, joy, harmony. And when we bear all these things, ideas come into our mind, then we bring it to the world and make it beautiful and make our cities, our towns, our continent, a continent of greatness. So righteousness exalts a nation. Africa, we are down. We are poor. Anything that we are looking for, we want, has to be brought to us by someone. That means we are not exalted. It's a reproach. We are always being buffeted by difficulties and challenges. That is the reproach because of our ungodly thinking. And when I say godly thinking, I mean positive thinking. I mean positive thinking. Positive thinking. But not the godly thinking that we talk of going to church. I do not care about the religion you belong to. I do not care about your religious practices. I care about you as a spiritual being, as a unique human being that God brought here with a, a, a powerful mind to use to empower yourself, to improve your life and all other people. Any other things other than this is of no use to me. That is where we are. The African mind must be given the freedom to think in its right way. Not just going through book pages and pages and reading them and, I mean, chewing them and make poor, no. Be being able to use our mind at a certain level that our righteousness, our right thinking will, will, will be littered all over our, in, in our lives. Go to your, uh, uh, London. And well, I'm using my experience when when I went to London, I had a job which was just a, a little bit outside Romford. Those who are in London knows what I'm talking about. And we used to, I used to go, I was in the office, but sometimes uh, those of us in the office, we used to go with the delivery. It's a kind of a delivery company. Um, you used to go with the drivers. So one day, my early days in London, one day, we went to a place called Raynham, and at a point, the driver showed me a bridge that was hanged in the air over the river Thames. And the man told me, this is what we call the Elizabeth Bridge. It's been, uh, I mean, hanged, and you see it. It's at a very high. So I told the man that I will never drive over this bridge. But as I grew, I grew in life in London, it got to a point that I actually drove over this bridge. And I even under the, uh, the, the river Thames is also a tunnel. So when you are from one end, you take the tunnel. When you are coming from the other end, you take the bridge. And you will see this and you will, see, you will get marvel. Africans will take money, will go and stand there and look at it and say, wow, yeah, that by their fruit, you will know them. You are seeing them. You are recognizing them as people who are right. You are thinking in the right direction of how humanity is moving. And then we are being getting the reproach. We have nothing. Even the little that we have, we are coming here to pay uh, just to watch some of these things. Wherever you will go, anywhere in the developed world, all things are related to show who they are. They are right thinking, thinking in the right direction, thinking in the way that it's supposed to be. Africans, there are no witches. There are no, all this kind of superstitions and all taboos and this that we have used to, I mean, to entangle ourselves. We need to get away we need to get them away and let the African mind become a liberated mind. 
You shall know them by their fruits. Today, as you listen to me, don't always interpret this. Don't, don't interpret this biblical verse as it's been preached to you, but interpret it by the looking at your own life. So me, I call yourself, what are my fruits? What are the fruits I am bearing? How am I using my mind? Righteousness is right thinking. And that is why Jesus Christ never preached any message apart from what? He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance is done in your mind. You don't do repentance in the way you dress. Repentance is done in your mind. If you, once you change your mind and even you are naked and you are actually thinking right away, all other things will come back and they will add up. Righteousness is thinking rightly. And any man or woman who thinks rightly and busy his mind with only thinking of the goodness, the improvement, the quality, the good quality of life of mankind will always be prosperous, will always be seen. His fruits or her fruits will be seen on the altar. So Africans, we are bearing our own fruits by the, the, what, how we think, by the level of our righteousness. What are we bearing? Poverty, lack, underdevelopment, and all these kind of things that are happening. Until we rise up, we begin to think in a different direction, in a different way, and begin to take control of our lives, and begin to, I mean, coming to the point, to coming to the understanding, the realization that a man or woman is at the center of his own life. Therefore, we create our own realities, and therefore, we need to tune our mind. We need to concentrate our mind only on the positive, only on the goodness, only on the wonderful things that we want to see in our life. It will not appear. We can only, I mean, I mean, pray, 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 and bleed like goats and sheep asking for help. But it will not come because you are your own liberator. You can, you, no one can liberate us. No one can liberate us except we celebrate ourselves because our mind is a creative medium and when the condition is set in the mind, nothing can change it except the mind changing it itself. You shall know them by their fruits. You will recognize them by their fruits. And also, righteousness exalts a nation. So a nation that is considered as under development is not being exalted, whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter how the number of cathedrals or the number of mosques or whatever, the size of the mosque or whatever we have. Yeah, African countries, we are daydreaming. We are fooling ourselves. Yeah, we're putting up the biggest whatever, whatever uh, church or cathedral and we are having done. This is not what is needed. But the improvement in the life of the African people, every or every human being on the continent of Africa, and this is, can only be done by using our mind in one direction, together, together, for a purpose, for a purpose. No one cares about how we are dressed or whatever, but everyone cares about how we are using our mind because that is why we are here for. So humanity is waiting, 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 looking upon the day that, the, waiting for the day that the African mind will rise up and declare to the universe, declare to the world that, hey, this is what we have made by the use of our own minds. This is the African technology. This is the African invention. This is the African made. That is when Africa will be considered as an exalted continent. That is when Ghana will be considered as an exalted nation. That is when Nigeria will be considered as an exalted nation. That is when Tanzania will be considered as an exalted nation. That is when South Africa will be considered as an exalted nation. As it is, it is not. It is not. It is not. It is not. The after condition of every human being is literally linked to the inner state. Men do not attract what they what they want, but who they are by James Allen. And in the same way, men do not demonstrate what they don't have. They demonstrate what they have. You will not show in your outer environment what you don't have within you, but you only show it, you only show what you have within you. So it, the level of development, the level of development in your life, the level of development in your town, in your village, in your nation, is the direct reflection of what the African person can think and do on himself.
Whatever we will go for money, for loans, and whatever to come, those things will disappear because they are not in alignment with our level of evolution, our level of righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation. If you want to be exalted, then this is the time for us to begin to use our minds rightly, rightly, rightly. Don't forget this, my brother, my sister. Righteousness is right thinking. Right thinking. So it's about time we begin to think. We begin to think and stop abusing your mind when you sit down and pray. When you sit down and and pray and pray in fear and worry that there are evil forces are attacking you. That means you are unrighteous person. You are thinking unrightly, ungodly, unrightly, and the reproach you get is poverty, lack, and that is what is what is what we are seeing. That is what we are seeing here. Come to this part of the world, and as I've used Canada, Toronto where I live, where my experience, and even in London, my experience, as I've used it, they are not thinking of prayers. No one talk about prayers. No one talk about what they think that is, we are preoccupied ourselves in, in, in Africa. What they think is thinking. Use your mind. What can you bring to the table? What can you bring to the table? Before anyone will give you a job in this part of the world, they are looking at what you can bring to the table, but not how you can bombard and come and bring. No one cares about that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So this is the time for us to become awakened. This is the time for us to stand up and begin to walk in the right direction. God is spirit, as Jesus Christ said. And those who worship God must worship him in truth and in spirit. Spirit is everywhere. Spirit is the maker and the creator of everything. And when we are in tune with spirit, when we are tuned with the creative energy, the creative force in us, who connected to the overall creative force, then we are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. People who do all things through Christ strengthens us shows only higher and greater and beautiful things. Those who have put people into outer space, they are doing things through Christ who strengthened them. Those who have done amazing things, they are doing things through Christ who strengthened them. Christ is personalized or personified in our divinities. So you are doing everything by your divinity. And your divinity is pure. Your divinity is right. Your divinity is godly and therefore use your mind anything that comes to the mean to put you at a level that you are a victim of anything is a, that means you are going against the power that god has given to you you are going against your divinity anything that makes you or any thought that makes you feel that you are a victim of anything then you are thinking wrongly because you are not a victim of anything but you are a creator who creates his own realities and that is the truth. Even at the truth, and the truth shall set you free. My brother, my sister, it is my desire. It is the desire and the prayers and the determination of all the men and women in eagle mentality that my fellow Africans, you embrace these ideas. You embrace this message and let us rise. Let us rise. Let us rise and build our nations. Let us now begin to think righteously. Let us begin to seek the, the, the true righteousness, which is the use of the constructive and the uh, constructive use of our minds to create and to mold and to shape things in our outer life. And that is when God has actually, the glory of God is being seen. And that is when we are exalted to be amongst the already exalted ones. This is the truth. And so as I bring my message to an end, I passionately call on you, my fellow Africans, to begin to perform a total analysis of your life. How are you using your mind? Do away with all these false beliefs. And let us begin to work on ourselves one by one, one by one. And let the African man stand independently and on his own. Unafraid of anything except his own powers that he guides. He uses to guide his life in the right course. And that is when we are come to the level at which all other human beings are now. As it is, we are behind. So let us get up. Now, as usual, I say, may the overshadowing presence of God that keeps the stars in the open from falling on us, 
that keeps the planets in their orbit without clashing with one another, keep you and lead you and direct you, give you an open heart and a, an, an open mind and a receptive heart to think and think, 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 think about whatever I have just shared with you and now begin to put your mind on the right path by thinking independent of anything. There is nothing on the outside, on the outer that can affect you in any way. Let your mind be your guide and let your mind think only good and powerful things as said by Apostle Paul. Whatever thing that is pure, whatever thing that is noble, whatever thing that is of high quality, whatever thing that brings good life improvement in the life of mankind think of those things meditate on those things and they become our lives once again my name is emmanuel kwejo mensa i am a co-founder of the eagle mentality group an eagle mentality group we dedicate our time and our energy our everything to the teaching and the propagation of the information about the power of the subconscious mind and the universal laws and principles that govern all the universe it is our dream and our determination to raise a new group of africans that think and do things in a different way as we do now to raise a critical mind that to hold the African nations, our continent, to build, to build and raise Africa to a level that it will actually, it will indeed reflect the words of the writer of the Proverbs that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. We are moving away from the reproaching to the exalting, exaltation or exalting of the nation. We are, it is our dream that our continent, every country in Africa will be exalted to the point that all men and women from everywhere will come to live amongst us and we live together side by side as one, showing the glory and the beauty of God, which is in diversity. Thank you and God bless you.